Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Christmas Lights from the creators who brought you Robots Love Ice Cream, which we did previously. It is two to six players, ages six and up, and takes about 10 to 30 minutes to play the game. In the game Christmas Lights, the card game, you're simply going to be playing a game of Blind Man's Bluff, and where you're going to have cards that you cannot look at but everyone else can see. You're going to have actions on your turn that let you sell cards and swap cards and play cards, and your objective is going to be based on playing cards to basically match up the orientation or the, uh, the sequence of two of these cards here. So for instance, you're going to need purple, then yellow, then pink, blue, and red. Or this one here, and you need another one, you attach it like that. Now of course there are Vulcan, 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 broken bulbs that are wild, and of course you're going to also have all the different colors of bulbs, and interestingly enough, you're going to be able to draw from the deck, and that can give you certain events that are going to give you bonuses as well as wilds and stuff. And of course, whoever is able to finish their Christmas lights first is the winner. And if there's a tie, whoever has the least broken bulbs in their sequence is going to beat them. Alright, let me go ahead and see what it looks like. So here we have Christmas lights, a card game, holiday fun for the whole family. And these are the different Christmas lights you're going to be using throughout the game, as well as plugs to connect them for your sequencing. You're going to have these cards, which are sequence cards you're going to be dealing out to each player, so they're going to know what cards they need to put in sequence, but not what cards are in their hand. They're also going to be taking cards from this deck here, they're also going to have all the different types of lights, including the draw one event card. There's a little event deck right here. We're going to be drawing cards off the top and using them whenever you uh, whenever you reveal the uh, event cards. And these are going to be considered wilds. you got things that are going to like power outage, and then of course you got stuff like light switch and power surge and all other crazy stuff that can happen during uh, your Christmas lights uh, <laughs> setting up. And you've also got the characters here. you got Santa and a snowman, and you got the elf, Mrs. Claus, Rudolph, and then a another elf, I guess? They got the male the female version. You got the rule book, the box for the game, and then of course little stands so you can go ahead and stand up your characters. The last thing you need to know too is that Santa always gets to go first. All right, let me tell you what yeah, happens in the game and how the turn order goes. So to begin the game, you're simply going to get five cards from the deck and put them into your hand. You can't look at them, so I'm not going to get to know what these cards are, but I get to see what everybody else's cards are. You're also going to take two of these string cards here, and these are for you to look at, but for nobody else to look at. And they're going to have the different sequences you're going to need to complete in order to win the game. If you can complete both of these before anybody else, you will win. Now, in your hand, it's interesting because you're going to get to take up to four different actions in order, and you can choose to take it or not to take it. The first one is going to be Swap, in which you'll take a card from your hand, you'll put it face down on the table, you'll take one of your opponent's cards, put it face down on the table, and then place them back into your hands. That way you'll each know what cards you swapped were. The other one you can choose to do next is Play a card. You simply go ahead and choose any card you want in your hand to play. Now, if you know what this card is after you simply swapped it, you can place it like this if you'd like to sec uh, uh, situate it out outside of your hand, so that way you know when you want to play this card when you don't want to play the card. Playing it, simply placing it down, you can also choose to just go for a random one if you want, and if you get lucky enough and you place the right card down, so for instance, uh, maybe I want to go with either purple or red here, because you can choose either side or either card, uh, and so you go, okay, I want to go for purple, you can play the card face down. If you get face up and if you get lucky, you get to actually place that card into your sequence. Once you place the card down, though, and you start the sequence, you have to continue completing the sequence. After play, you can simply choose to sell, and sell is interesting. You can choose any one random card from your hand, place it face up, and then you choose a card from the deck and place it face up. You're then able to select either of those cards if you can and put it into your sequence. If you can't, you can have your opponent, if they would like, buy a card from you. So they're simply going to take their card and put it into their hand, and at the cost of doing that, you get to ask them, uh, what card do I have? Do I have a blue card in my hand? And they'll say yes or no. I'll look at my hand real quick. Oh, they'll say yes, so you have one. And they'll point to here. I'll say, oh, okay, thank you. Now that I know that that's a blue card, I'll put it over there. Finally, you get to choose to hand reveal, or hand refill, sorry. When you're going to run out of cards eventually throughout the game, you're going to be playing them down. At any point in time, you could choose at the end of the turn to draw up to five cards, but you don't have to, which is also an interesting thing. And then after that, you're going to simply pass to the next player, and they're going to complete their turn, and it'll go along clockwise. Whoever completes their sequence first is the winner. Let me go ahead and show what it looks like. So we're back, and now we've gone ahead and set up the Christmas lights already. Everybody's got five cards in their hand. What we'll be playing is this guy here, so we actually don't know what cards are in his hand, but he, the other players will. Uh, we're also given everybody a singular character card, just see who goes first, as well as two of these strand cards. Everybody's going to get two of them, and they're going to know theirs, and I'm going to know mine. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and flip over these guys here to see who goes first. Santa gets to go first, and I'm Santa. Wonderful. And then, of course, the game is going to begin. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is simply swapping cards if you would like. Now, you're going to look at your hand here. You know that you need these sequences. So you've got green, purple, yellow, pink, and blue, green, blue, purple, pink, and white, or yellow here. Which one do we need first? We need either to get uh, greens, 
or a blue or a white. So, or, so yellow, <laughs> white. Now we're gonna go ahead and these, they can't see these, these are secret to them. Now we're gonna go ahead and choose to swap a card. We'll take this card here and swap it with this card here. We know what this card is. We want this so we can get this one here. We could also have chosen the green one. Then we're gonna put them face up like this and then they're going to switch hands. Now I will know that this is a yellow, so I'm gonna put it over here to the side. After that is done, and I could choose to do that or not, by the way. I can go ahead now to go play. Play is pretty simple. You can simply take a card from your hand and then you can play it and that will attach to your strand. When you play the card, you're going to, um, this is, you don't have to reveal these, these are still secret, but when you finish playing the full sequence, you're gonna reveal the card. So they know now that this is, this is one of the cards in one of your sequences. And of course, uh, if you look at it, this is the only one it can be. So the next one we have to get is pink. After you play a card, and you could also choose to play a card at random if you want, then you're going to go ahead and go to sale phase. Uh, sale phase is interesting. You're going to go ahead and pick a card from your hand, whether you know it or not, and put it up on the table here. You're going to take a card from the deck and place it here on the table. And then you can just select if you can use one of these cards and put it in your sequence. Now we know that we need the pink one, so that's not going to work for us now, unfortunately. Had we took in the green one from his hand, we could have actually gotten this purple one to play, but unfortunately it didn't happen for us. So we can go ahead and sell this one of, a one of the players. If a player says they need it, they can go ahead and look, they say, oh, I need the purple one right here. They can go ahead and trade, putting it into play for them. And at the cost, they get to, you get to tell us, uh, they will have to tell us for putting it into play, um, what card is in our hand, if we have a card that we need in our hand. So we need pink, right? So we can say, oh, is, is pink in our hand? No, no pink in our hand. Okay, so we now know that the pink isn't in our hand. After that, then we're gonna to go to the hand refill phase. And in this case, we're probably gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna simply add two more cards to our hand up to our total limit of five and pass turn to the next player. This is going to repeat and continue to go throughout the game until somebody has got their strands completed. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and put one of these out here just so you can get a good idea. And then we'll just simply pretend like it happened. There's the, there's the pink and there's the purple. And then we needed a blue and we needed a green. So once you went ahead and completed one of the strands here, you're gonna simply reveal that you've completed it, signifying that you're going to go to the next strand. But you're also gonna need additional cards. For instance, you're gonna need stuff like plugs here. When you place a plug down, that will allow you to go onto your next strand, and you can still select either side that you want and continue with your Christmas strands. Uh, other interesting cards in the game you're gonna find are going to be broken bulbs, which are going to have you um, they're basically kind of like wild cards. That's a broken bulb right there. Now how it works is you can place it in your strand um, to signify that this is the next card in the sequence. So let's say, you, first of all, you completed this one and you need a blue, but you don't have blue, but you know you have pink. So you can go ahead and place this broken bulb here and place a pink down and then continue the game. However, whenever a broken bulb is on your field, it doesn't complete, you don't complete your sequence until you actually place the correct bulb on here. So you're gonna need to put that blue there eventually in order to do so. Now, the limiting factor is everybody's always gonna get to complete the full turn, even if you've already completed the sequences. So whoever has the most broken bulbs is going to not be able to win the ties. So for instance, if he had three broken bulbs in his sequence and he had uh, one broken bulb, he would actually win the game even though they completed the strands at the same time. The last thing that's pretty interesting too is the fact that there's going to be cards in here that are like these event cards here. Let's see if we can find one. Draw one event card. When that happens, you're simply going to take this event card, event deck here and flip it over and you can use that card. This is actually a wild card so it can just be placed down into a sequence and it will count as any bulb. However, you'll encounter other ones like Christmas Eve. All players can look at one card in their hand or Boxing Day or reveal one extra card from the deck during the sale phase and so on and so forth. That's the basic aspect of how to play Christmas Lights, the card game. Just simply complete your strands before anybody else can and do it so without looking at the cards in your hand. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So in general, I have caveats for the game, but there's not really that much to go over. I think I went over pretty much everything. You get little stands to put your characters up. And of course, there's more different events in the, in the deck, but I'm not gonna go over them so you can have a little surprise. Let's go ahead and get into the review. So first of all, when I see a Christmas game or a Halloween game, these type of uh, seasonal games, I kind of get discouraged because I think, okay, they're latching onto a holiday and perhaps, perhaps it's just kind of getting the, the seasonal people interested. But as I started playing Christmas Lights, I realized how much I enjoyed it. I love Blind Man Bluff games. I love the aspect of it. As I read the rules, I'm like, oh, this is something I'm really going to like. And what I really, really like about this game, not only is the switching and swapping and all that, but the choice of choosing to do those actions or not. You can choose to do none of the actions on your turn, or one, or two, or all of them, and you can choose to do it with any player that you want. It kind of gives you that freedom to say, I don't want to put more cards in my hand because I know you need one more card, and I know I don't have it in my hand, so I'm not going to give you that advantage. This game has a bit of luck in it, 
it, but there's so much more strategy involved. Uh, the artwork is okay. It reminds me of a Christmas theme. If you like Christmas games right in time for the holiday season, this is going to be definitely one, one you want to pick up. I imagine it'll probably be ready by Christmas, which is the idea. But uh, they're all cutesy little Christmassy arts. The Christmas tree, right? And then, of course, you've got the little Christmas light bulbs and all that. And they work really well. The game functions exactly as it needs to, and the theme does come out as you like Christmas-style games. But the game itself is fun. I love the fact that I mean, the rule book tells you exactly how it works. It's only two pages. It's really easy to read. Swapping cards is sweet. Playing cards is better, especially when you get lucky and play the exact card you need based on your opponent's like faces. Like, oh, he has the card, but he doesn't know which one. And I'm like... <sighs> Got it! And I get the card. Oh, it's fun. The sale, the sale, sale phase works really well as well, because it gives you the chance to see the top cards of the deck. And if you want to, you can choose to sell cards to gain information. Now, you're going to want to choose to do that really depending on how the situation is going and how well you're doing in the game. And players are also going to be determined on whether they want to take cards or not based on how close you are to winning. So it adds a little bit of extra extra ness into the game and finally of course you have the events that can take place now of course this is a really good card the wild cards are excellent and then you've got the event cards which i explained before a couple of them like boxing day looking at card in your hand or simply looking uh revealing one extra card from the deck during the sale phase that's super cool as well right um but that adds a little extra complexity which is just a nice touch it's not even really needed but just throwing it in there was fun and i i, I like that aspect of the game there are a couple nasty ones too in here that can kind of mess you up so you got to be careful another thing too is adding those blo broken bulb wilds I should say they're kind of wild and they're kind of not wild right because they do help you get through your sequence but you still need to go back and place it and it's going to cost you later in the game if you tie with somebody because if you have more broken bulbs than them you are going to lose overall Christmas lights is really really fun it's definitely one of the best holiday Kickstarter games I've seen so far and I really really do enjoy it it's a simple game though it's got four aspects to it and it, it's that got that holiday spirit so if you're interested in Christmas lights go ahead and check it out another solid game from the creators of robots love ice cream 25th century games all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if you like this video go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment and all does help me greatly appreciate it please subscribe it's all i live for also go ahead and check out christmas lights it's currently on kickstarter in the description below if you like blind man's bluff and you like holiday games this is one that you shouldn't pass up as well as checking out our website unfilteredgamer.com we get tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more there might be a giveaway still up if not it's got the new one out i don't know what that one is because i haven't edited this in the future yet future me doesn't exactly know also go ahead and check out everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek they definitely have giveaways and blog posts on there and there's some great guys all right that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to merry christmasing you later